All right, so there's a new paper going viral right now, and it's making a pretty bold claim. It's literally titled Alpha Go Moment for Model Architecture Discovery. And the idea is that we may have just crossed a major threshold in how AI systems are designed. Instead of humans crafting new architectures or even guiding the search, this system called ASI Arc is doing the whole thing itself. It plays the role of the researcher, the engineer, and the analyst, generating hypotheses, running experiments, analyzing results, and ultimately iterating itself. What's crazy is that the researchers literally describe this as the first demonstration of artificial superintelligence for AI research, ASI for AI, specifically in the critical domain of neural architecture discovery. And apparently, it works. As they state, ASI ARC conducted 1,773 autonomous experiments over 20,000 GPU hours, culminating in the discovery of 106 innovative, state-of-the-art linear attention architectures, like AlphaGo's Move 37, which revealed unexpected strategies invisible to human players. The paper claims these AI-discovered models demonstrate emergent design principles that systematically surpass human design baselines and illuminate previously unknown pathways for architectural innovation. And on top of that, they claim to have established the first empirical scaling law for scientific discovery itself, showing that research progress can scale with compute, not human effort. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. This paper isn't just claiming they've built a recursive, self-improving AI. They're also saying they found a scaling law for scientific discovery itself. These are extremely bold claims. So now, how exactly does this thing work? On page 4, they lay out the full ASI ARC pipeline. And it's basically a four-part system running in a closed loop. It all starts with the researcher, in purple. This is where the model proposes a brand new architecture based on its own past experiments and some distilled knowledge from the AI literature. Then, it immediately writes the code and runs a novelty and sanity check to make sure it's not just repeating past ideas or breaking anything obvious. Next, the proposal gets handed off to the engineer, in orange. This part drops the architecture into a real training environment, runs experiments, and scores it. There's actually a separate LLM judge that evaluates the architecture's novelty, efficiency, and complexity, kind of like a peer reviewer, but also AI. After training, the results go to the analyst, in blue. This model reads the logs, looks at how the model performed compared to its parent and sibling designs, and tries to figure out why something worked or didn't. It then generates a theoretical report, summarizing what was learned from that experiment. And finally, all of that gets fed back into the system, along with insights pulled from the Cognition Base, which is a curated database of human research scraped from Archive, Hugging Face, and Papers with Code. Now, this whole loop, from proposing an idea, to testing it, to learning from it, repeats over and over. In total, they actually ran it 1,773 times, completely autonomously. So, the question is, what did ASI Arc actually discover? Well, again, after running 1,773 times, the system filtered out the best performing designs and ended up with 106 new linear attention architectures that beat their human design baseline, DeltaNet. This is what they call the architectural phylogenetic tree, and each node here is one of the models it created. You can literally see the evolutionary lineage as each architecture mutates and builds on the previous generation. These weren't just random tweaks either. The system explored a wide range of strategies, and a few of the final models even outperformed strong baselines like gated DeltaNet and Mamba2 across multiple tasks. For example, architectures like Path Gate Fusion Net, Content Sharp Router, and Fusion Gated FIR Net introduced custom routing mechanisms and hierarchical gating setups that the paper claims were both novel and effective. And the benchmarks clearly back that up, with many of the discovered models scoring higher than the best human-designed alternatives on zero-shot reasoning tasks, language modeling, and downstream benchmarks like ARC and PICA. Okay, so I know we're getting a bit technical here, but let's zoom out for a second. What this really means is that an AI system with no human help 
just invented over a hundred new model architectures, and some of them beat the best models we had across real benchmarks. It didn't do this by copying another paper, but by running its own experiments, learning from its own results, and literally iterating itself. But now, probably the even bolder claim of this paper is this. The authors say they discovered what they call the first empirical scaling law for scientific discovery itself. Basically, the more compute you throw at this system, the more novel and effective its discoveries become. This graph here shows the progression. As ASI ARC ran more experiments, the average quality of its models didn't plateau. It kept getting better. So it's not just that we have automated research, it's that we can now scale automated research. That's the real AlphaGo comparison here. But just to be clear, when they say scientific discovery, they're not talking about uncovering new physics or inventing time travel or whatever. What they're really referring to is neural architecture discovery, which is a kind of scientific process. This is still obviously a huge deal though, because if the same approach could work in other fields, like chemistry, biology, or material science, we might be looking at the early stages of something much bigger. But maybe the most fascinating part of all this is that ASI ARC didn't just spit out good architectures. It uncovered emergent design principles. In other words, it didn't just trial and error its way to better models, it actually started to identify patterns and strategies that worked across designs. Things like dynamic gating, hierarchical routing, structure function trade-offs, all discovered without ever being told to look for them. That's the kind of insight we usually expect from top-tier human researchers. And now, a fully autonomous system is just doing it, at scale. Alright, so we've seen that ASI ARC discovered a bunch of novel architectures. And yeah, that's pretty cool. But here's the real question. Are any of these actually useful in the real world? Because some people have pointed out that most of these designs focus on linear attention, which isn't necessarily what frontier models like GPT-4, Claude, or Gemini are using today. So even if the benchmarks look strong, which they do, this doesn't necessarily mean it's about to reshape the frontier overnight. But here's why it still matters. What this paper really shows is that we now have systems that can autonomously discover viable components for future architectures at scale with no human supervision. That means the next breakthrough in LLM efficiency, speed, or training cost might actually come from another AI, not a human research lab. Maybe not these exact models, but the method here changes everything. This is literally the foundation for recursive self-improvement, and this might be our first real glimpse of what that actually looks like. So yeah, is this the first real step toward recursive self-improvement, or just a clever research pipeline with a flashy title? Either way, it feels like a line just got crossed. And while I can't confirm the validity of these experiments and findings myself, as I'm not exactly familiar with the inner workings of neural architectures, this does truly seem like a big deal. Because if we now have systems that can improve themselves and discover better building blocks for the next generation of AI, then the idea of an intelligence explosion stops being theoretical and starts looking like a literal roadmap. So let me know what you think in the comments. Are we witnessing the beginning of the intelligence explosion or are people getting ahead of themselves? Either way, I hope you got something out of this breakdown. If you did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss another breakthrough like this. And as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.